Welcome to Mike Morrison Ministries Church at the Barn Tuesday night yeah, Bible study. I got a clock right. <laughs> okay, let's so let's start. Would you open your Bibles, please, to Matthew chapter 13? And uh, that's where we're going to be working. While you're turning there, I want to read uh, John 3, 5. You might want to mark it, too, if you want to. But I'm going to read John 3, 5. Verily, verily, this is red letters, Jesus. I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That phrase, kingdom of God, is found just in the book of Matthew. I counted today 53 times. Just in Matthew. This is not a small subject, and it is the message that Jesus preached everywhere he went, over and over and over. So in Matthew 13, uh, uh, it, that's, it, that's what he's doing. And in, in Matthew, I'm just going to put it this way. In Matthew 13, you'll find Jesus taught in parables. And the reason he taught in parables, they ask him, uh, look at 13.10. And now read the Amplified Bible mostly tonight. Then the disciples came to him and said, why do you speak to them in parables? It's a little fuzzy. That's Wyoming translation. Why do you, why do you speak to them in parables? He replied, and just, he just flat out told them a reason. To you it has been given to know the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom. Now, a lot of times the King James Bible says kingdom of heaven, and, and otherwise it'll say kingdom of God. And I have heard some really silly preaching about the difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. It's the kingdom it's the, you can say the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. It's the kingdom we're talking about. The kingdom, and, and hold your place here and just back up in Matthew to 6.33. There's a very good definition of it right in the Bible and amplified. And King James said, Jesus said, red letters, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What things? He's talking about what? The things that you need in life. The things you... Food, shelter, and clothing. Don't worry about that. Seek the kingdom of God. And all this stuff will come on you and overtake you. If you're looking, if your focus is... God told you to put your focus. You can quit worrying about all the things the rest of the world worries about. Because God's going to take care of that for you. If you'll do what he told you to do, he'll take care of this stuff. All right? He'll not only take care of everything you need. He'll take care of things you don't even know you want. But you start by finding out what the kingdom of God is and then following these directions and putting it first place in your life. So verse, again, Matthew 13, 11, he said, to you it's been given to know the secrets and mysteries of the kingdom. But to them it has not been given for whoever has spiritual knowledge, to him will more be given. Say that. Say this with me. I have spiritual knowledge. I thank God for giving it to me. And I thank God he promised me he's given me more. And now, uh, whoever has a spiritual knowledge to him will be more will be given. And he will be furnished richly so that he will have abundance but from him who has not, has not what? Knowledge. He doesn't want to know. 
yet. Even what he has will be taken away from him. God's not taking it away. The thief cometh, John 10, 10, the thief cometh, but to steal, kill, and destroy, the first thing he's going to do is steal the word of God because then he can kill you or destroy everything. But he's got to steal the word to do it because if you stand on the word, he's out of business. All right, so... Uh, Verse 13, this is the reason that I speak to them in parables. Because having the power of seeing, they do not see, and having the power of hearing, they do not hear, nor do they grasp and understand. But it, the idea here is it's hid in that parable. When they, when they seek, they'll find it. It's in there. He's hiding it for us, not from us. And once you're, once you're not running from it anymore and you're looking for it, he'll just open it up and open it up and open it up. The, the parables are for the body of Christ. It's for the believers. So when you, when you the, back one more time, back to John 3, 5. This was Nicodemus had asked a question, I believe, in 3. I'll back up a verse or two. John 3, 4. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Well, we better read three. Jesus said to Nicodemus, I assure you solemnly, I tell you that unless a person is born again, anew, from above, he cannot ever know, be acquainted with, and experience the kingdom. What's the new birth for? So God can fill you up with the kingdom. You, without the new birth, you can't get in. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter his mother's womb again and be born? Jesus said, Verily, verily, truthfully, truly, truly, truthfully, truth. I'm not lying. I'm not lying. <laughs> This is it. This is the key. This is the key. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom. Once you receive Jesus as Lord, what happens is the Spirit of God that had to leave Adam and Eve in the garden because they sinned comes back into the vessel of the human being where he belongs and he fills you up with light and life, the gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, um, the power, every single thing that, that God wanted you to have is downloaded into you in one millisecond. Bam! You get it all. You, you, you're a spirit and you've got it all. You are absolutely shot full of Zoe life. You, you have an eternal spirit. Your spirit has become eternal and new, and it'll never be separated from God again. So that's why you'll notice Jesus didn't like using the word dying and death. When a, when a little girl died, he said, she's sleeping. I said, she's dead. We know a dead girl when we see one. And he said, Awake, and she just come back to life. He never gave place to the thief who come but to steal, steal, kill, and destroy. That's why you want to keep the Word of God first place in your life all the time, no matter what thoughts flying through your head. You, you use your mind to, to uh, think on what God said. Think on what, think on what the kingdom, Jesus taught the kingdom everywhere he went. 53 times he mentioned it in Matthew. <laughs> it's, just, it's, in, it's in Mark, it's in Luke, and it's in John. The kingdom is the subject that Jesus taught on everywhere he went. In fact, he, he would open the, the, he would open to the book of Isaiah Chapter 61, verse 1. He'd find the place where it was written, is where it, you read it in the Gospels, but I'm just going to turn to what he found. He'd turn to Isaiah 61, and he'd read this. 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all those that mourn. And in his hometown, he got about that far when they started shouting him down. Said in, in, uh, in his own hometown, he could do no mighty works. He, was re he read that, and that's when they're starting not to believe him already in his own hometown. That didn't happen everywhere he went. It happened in his hometown because they're saying, uh, that's Mary's son. We know Mary. She wasn't married when she got pregnant. And so on. He's got brothers, and we know, we know his family can't be him <laughs> and uh, missed the whole they missed the whole point of the whole thing so let now let's uh, Jesus preached the kingdom everywhere he went let's go to see it in Matthew 13 that's what we want to do tonight and uh Let's look at uh, verse 8 of these in Matthew 13. And I want to read verse, we were reading in 10, the reason he taught in parables. And I want to go to uh, verse 31 and read this parable. In verse 31, he said, the kingdom, this time it's of heaven, but the kingdom, is like to a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds. Have you ever looked at a mustard seed? I think ladies have that in your spice cabinet. You probably, these things are tiny, <laughs> tiny. How many of you have ever seen a mustard tree? Um, mustard seeds make mustard trees. And mustard trees are magnificent. I mean, one mustard tree be, would fill this room probably, and then some. They're magnificent. From a tiny little bitty seed that tree is inside that seed and that's the way the kingdom works everything God's given you he's put in seeds and, the, and in this parables that Jesus taught Mark chapter 4 the seed is the word of God everything God said is that seed that goes into this born again spirit. As a matter of fact, it was seed about the new birth that we just read in John 3. That's how you get born again. You hear the seed that Jesus died for your sins, but death couldn't hold him and he came back to life. And if you'll take him up on a trade he's offering you, he'll give you his life for yours, his righteousness for yours, everything he deserves for everything you deserve. He'll just trade you. Now, that's pretty good news. That's what gospel means, good news. The gospel is Jesus fixed everything, and if you'll take him up on it, he'll download the kingdom into you. And the kingdom has a name, the Holy Spirit of God. Almighty God will come into you and just give you everything he's got. He won't just give you everything he's got. He'll take up residence inside of you. Now you're packing him around. Inside you are a temple of the power of God that created this place. The power of God, the Spirit of God created this place with words. When Jesus said, light be, it was all the way through Genesis 11 times God said light be no God said be 
he said something in it and then said B and it was. And then he created man and it, and it said he breathed the breath of life in man but if you go back in the Hebrew and do some research what you find out is he, he did the same thing with man he did everything else. He breathed when he breathed the breath of life in him, he spoke. And he came to life. And he immediately turned the whole place over to him. And he said, now come here and you name. You call. You name the animals. And we don't have record of it, but he, here's what happened. Obviously, with a little common sense. With God helping... Adam come up with the name Frog. Frog B. He didn't say Omeba B. He didn't say Monkey Man B. Monkey B. Man B. Elephant. No, not man. He didn't create man. He created everything. Monkey B. Horse B, whatever. What did God create before the fall that a man could even remember every single thing that was alive on the planet and name every one of them and remember every single name? You get one of those, you. See, we got everything from God in our spirit we're ever going to get. We don't have our body back yet. And when we get, re when we, when the rapture happens and we come up, the dead in Christ rise, their bodies come up out of the grave, and those of us who are alive are caught up together with them to meet him in the air, we get our brain back the way it was for Adam in the garden before he messed everything up. And we can remember everything total recall there's some people in here old enough to go that's going to be really fun <laughs> back on track we're in where, which parable are we reading verse 31 okay we'll look we'll look at the parable in uh 1331, the kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which when a man took and sowed it in his field, which indeed is the least of all seeds, or the tiniest, but when it grow, is grown, it is the greatest among herbs, and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. So this is the kingdom of God Thy will be done on earth, Matthew 6, 33. Thy will be done on earth like it is in heaven. Did we look at 6, 33 between the mic switching and everything? We did. I'm going to, I want to, I was alluding to it. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Bible. Seek, aim at, strive after, first of all, his kingdom and his righteousness. His kingdom and his righteousness. His way of doing and being right. The way he does things. And then all these things taken together will be given to you beside. So his kingdom. Heaven is not a democracy. Heaven is not a constitutional republic. Heaven is a kingdom. It has a king. And everything is, everything is decreed from the throne room. And the kingdom of God decided the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, high court of the universe, decided they wanted to make human beings in their image. A race of humans. Not angels. 
like Lucifer, who fell into Satan, or like all the beings that fell with him, or like the other angels that didn't fall, not like seraphim or cherubim or any of the beings that God had created uh, in, in innumerable, but a race of humans made in his image like him that could fellowship, that he could fellowship with and they could fellowship with him. They could, they could choose him. They could want him or not because he's given them a free will like he had. He did not give any other being a free will, only humans. The human being has a right to choose. Now God said choose life, don't choose death. Choose good, not evil. Choose right, not wrong. It's up to you, though. It's absolutely up to you. You can choose. Now, because some people are choosing anything but right, he hid these truths in these parables so that when they decided to choose right, they could go in there and find them. If you seek, you'll find if you ask, it'll be given to you. If you knock, it'll be opened unto you. If you don't seek and you don't ask and you don't find, all that can happen for you is intercessory prayer can set it up for you so that God keeps arranging things in your everyday life that demonstrate to you that there is something out there that you're, that you're seeking. Let me put it this way. All Human beings are seeking the same thing. They all want something they don't have. And they all don't have the same thing. <laughs> they're, try they're looking for peace. They're looking for happiness. They're looking for fulfillment. They're looking for uh, contentment. And they search everywhere philosophy and religions that have been built over the course of the 6,000 years of human history according to the Word of God. 6,000 years. Men have been seeking the, the answer to life that will fill that hole on the inside of them because they're not happy. They're not content and they're looking for it. What they're missing, they don't, they don't even know enough to know what they're really missing. It's not happiness they're missing. They're missing peace. The Holy Spirit of God is peace. They're missing what Adam and Eve blew off, blew off in the garden. When they sinned, the, that everything people want is what left to keep them alive. The Spirit of God could not stay in their bodies without wiping them out. Because when they sinned, the holiness of God would wipe out that sin. So that it had to be a millisecond before that sin hit, the Holy Spirit left. The light went out. They knew they didn't have any clothes on because the light went out and they could see themselves. They couldn't even see their skin before that. So they knew something went really, really wrong. And then God laid it out. He just flat out told them what, what went wrong and what was going to happen because of it. He told the devil what, he, what was going to happen to him. He told Adam what was going to happen to him. And he told Eve what was going to happen to her. And he told the whole, everybody that was listening, but there's coming, there's coming one. You'll bruise his heel, but he's going to break your head. And he did. Yeah, he got here took 4,000 years for God to get Jesus in the earth since he'd give everything to Adam and Adam had spoofed it off and it belonged to the devil now. So God had to use people to say words in spite of their new God, the devil, until those words became flesh and dwelt among us. But once it happened and Jesus paid the price for sin and he came back to life, the first thing he did when, he, when he, told, he told his disciples, now you go 
over here and wait because the Spirit's coming. And that's what the whole, that's what the whole thing was about. So what's the devil have to do to stop the body of Christ from walking in this? The first thing he's going to do is get a whole bunch of the church not interested whatsoever in the baptism of the Holy Ghost and praying in other tongues. Explain that away, blow that off, and keep people away from the object of the event. The object of the entire event the reason God made man in the first place and the thing that everybody's hunting for that they can't find is the fulfillment, the contentment, the peace, not just happiness, the love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, gentleness, meekness, and temperance that comes into the inside of a human being and changes them from the inside out so that they look like and, and, uh, and, and want to behave like their new resident <laughs> that lives inside of them now. That's the message. That's the gospel message. And it's really that simple. And uh, these parables now, with that in mind, let's read the next one. I was in 13, and I'd read 31. Th then 33 says, Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven which a woman took and hid three measures of meal, hid in three measures of meal, until the whole was leavened. What happens with bread when you leaven it? Expands and it grows, expands and it grows. The kingdom of God expands and grows. A seed, a tiny little seed, has a, has a mustard tree in it. How many mustard seeds are in a mustard tree? Over the life of that tree, one seed produces at least hundreds of, hundreds of thousands, probably more than that, in a tree that big with those little bitty seeds. Year after 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 year. This is the way the kingdom of heaven works. And it works like leaven and bread. It causes things to just grow. Supernatural growth when you're talking about the spirit. And look at the next parable is in uh, verse 44 that I want to look at. The parable that Paris get, Paris got explained, but we're going to 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buys that field. How many of you know that's extreme? He got rid of everything for that field. He was willing to trade everything and anything. For Paul said uh, in Philippians chapter 3 that he counted this, he, he described his education, and he was one of the most learned men of that time. He was a Roman with a Roman education, a brilliant man. But he was the Pharisee of the Pharisees. He was being groomed to be the high priest of Israel. And in that training, he had memorized the Torah. He had the Bible on recall in his mind. The, the Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, and Numbers. He had them in his head. The, the man was brilliant. He said, I count all of that dumb. That's pretty low. That's what I think of all that compared to the Spirit of God in me. That's, 
That's exactly, he, that's exactly what Jesus is teaching here. Jesus lived it before everybody while he was teaching it, and then he had Paul live it in front of everybody so people would know how it worked through somebody that wasn't the Son of God. As a matter of fact, he not only wasn't the Son of God, he was a murderer. He was killing Christians. He held the coast, which means he ordered the stoning of Stephen. And he was going to Damascus to do some more of that. When Jesus had enough, Jesus didn't stop him to make a preacher out of him. He stopped him because he wasn't going to kill any more Christians. That was the end. And he said, Lord, and interrupted what was going to happen to him because he become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things passed away, all things become new. And uh, now Jesus could use him. Took him from a death sentence to number one preacher on the planet. Just like that. And had him write, well, it wasn't just like that. He spent, I think, 13 years in Antioch. He, he had quite a bit of learning to do. But he come out of there demonstrating the power of the gospel in front of the whole world. And, he, he, and Paul said, you know what, if you can't do this copying Jesus, copy me, because I'm copying Jesus. And if you copy me like I'm copying Jesus, you'll get the same results he got. Because the same Holy Spirit that was in Jesus is in me, and he's in you. And if you'll do what the man, the human does, the Holy Spirit will do what the Holy Spirit does. It works perfect when it's put to work. Now, for the kingdom of God, verse 47. No, did we do 45? The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it. The theme here is you need to give up everything to get what God's got for you. This is extreme. Might, that might be the title of this message. Extreme Christianity. Christianity is what God's calling the body of Christ to in 2023. Because he has some extremely important things that need to happen in this planet, and it's going to take extreme believers to walk in what he needs us to walk in to get it done, because he's not doing it without us. He will be able to do it in spite of a lot of Christians but not in spite of all of them. Some of us are going to have to be in on it. We're going to have to, we're going to, have to give up everything. Not, not all... You, it's, it's not the possessions so much as it is the old thought strongholds, the old ways of looking at things, and the trying to hang on to, to all your worldly stuff and walk in the Spirit at the same time. You've got to do what Matthew 6.33 is talking about and seek that kingdom and quit worrying about your stuff. He's got that. That's his part of this deal. Well, God gave me my 401c3, well, 501, no, that's the one I'm after, the, the savings account, K, yeah. And in my, you know, my little nest egg, God gave me that. If God gave you that, then you wouldn't mind giving it back to him if he asked. Every dime of it. Wouldn't this also be that Jesus laid aside everything to purchase the world, the field, and Yeah, yeah. Yes, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, you can take these parables and preach lots of sermons out of them. What I'm trying to do is look at the key word kingdom. Uh, the kingdom is a system 
that God uses in heaven. It's a kingdom there. And then we, we got born again into that kingdom. We're Americans and we live, we live in America in a constitutional republic, but we're not limited to that anymore, church. We, we live here. Our home now is in heaven and our supply comes out of heaven. It doesn't come out of your savings account. It doesn't come off your job. It doesn't come off your anything that you can do in the natural unless you believe that. See, God said, you're made in my image. Here's the, here's the best I've got. Take it. If you don't, he'll work, he'll work with what you're taking best he can. But if you want the best, you got to go for the best, and you've got to let go. You've got to let go of natural to get supernatural. You, they don't work together. They'll work. You don't, you don't use the natural to support the supernatural. You dive into the super, and the natural is taken care of by the super. It's not that we don't live in the natural. It's not that we don't need this stuff. It's where are you putting your trust? Because truly, you won't. The only, the only way that you can really know where your trust is is if, if you're w willing to walk away from all of it if God asks you to. And of course, you won't know that unless God asks you to. And he probably won't, thank God. I mean, he's not asking everybody to give up everything. He's asking you to let go of it in your head. It's not taking care of you. He is. Quit trusting these, quit trusting the wrong kingdom. Trust the right kingdom. How do you know what kingdom you trust? It's not that difficult to give yourself a little test. Uh, when, you, when you go to the doctor for a checkup and uh, something's a little out of whack, what do you do about it? What's the first thing you do about it? Do you seek ye first the kingdom system? Or do you seek first anything man can think of to stop it quick? Not that you don't, not that there's anything against using everything man's got. It's what are you seeking first? Where's your, where's your believer at? while you're going through whatever it is that you need to walk through. Where, where's your expectation? Is your expectation on that system or this system? Because these parables show us how to walk in the best God's got. And they're extreme. You, you forsake everything to go after his best. You let you set everything else to the back seat and you put his way first. It will come out, the first place you'll notice the change is in your vocabulary. If you've changed what you're meditating, the way you look at things and the way you think about things, if you've switched from this system to that system, it will come out in your tongue under pressure. When everything's going wrong, what people hear you say, what the Spirit of God hears you say, what the devil hears you say, what you hear yourself say is where you're at. And you can't fake that. Life and death, I think Nathan read that already. It's Proverbs 18, 21. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. That's where God put it. What you and I say with our tongue is going to be with the system, the kingdom that we walk in. If you want to walk in God's miraculous, super abundant, beyond anything you can ask or think system, 
more than enough to deal with anything that arises, then you're going to have to extremely put it first. Not dabble in it and have it there for a rainy day in case things go wrong enough that you have to. You know what happens if you do that? You won't be any good at it. If you don't practice how to use faith when you, for some things that, that don't matter that much, if you don't learn how this works and learn how to get, uh, learn how the kingdom system operates, make it precious enough in your life to have it take over the, what, you, what you read, what you watch, what you meditate on, think about, and study, so that it dominates your, it dominates what your spirit's feeding on, it dominates what your mind's feeding on, and it will therefore dominate what your body's receiving through food. This affects your health. God, God put it this way, um, the word is the bread. It brings healing to our bodies, the marrow of our bones. The word of God does that. So, in this day and age we live in, people are chasing, studying, and going after health, and there's nothing particularly wrong with that. Just don't make it your, don't make it your priority. When, when you make anything but this Bible your priority, you're backwards. Make this your priority and let this other stuff support this. Put this first place. Why... <laughs> Do bad things happen to good Christian people? Probably the, easy, the, the, probably the key, the center of why is because most Christian people have put natural ahead of spiritual instead of spiritual ahead of natural. They didn't, uh, they didn't go after the treasure in the field by selling. They didn't forsake everything. They didn't get rid of everything they had to get over into it. They just went with what time they had. Well, you know, we're kind of busy, but we'll have, we have a little time for this. With what money they had, you know, things are a little short. We're on a budget. We can only, uh, this tithing stuff, you know, that's ridiculous. 10%, you got to be kidding, right? This is the 21st century. It takes everything that you can scrape together just to get by. That's why. The, it doesn't for keep... It does if you're operating partly in God's system, mostly in the world. Did you ever see Mark chapter 4? The man that planted good seed in good ground... Some got 30-fold, some got 60-fold, some got 100-fold. Why? Some people sold everything they had, 100-fold. They got rid of it all to get that. And what's going to happen, what God said it happened, you're going to get it all, 100-fold. And some gave 60 well, that's better than nothing, and God got back to him. He got back to him what he could, which is sixty times. Some of them got thirty, but most of them. When you read that parable, it isn't like most people got a return and a few didn't. It's the other way around. The the, the devil come immediately with tribulation and persecution. Immediately, things come up in their life that just wasn't fair. It's not right, you guys. You don't know how hard I, you know how bad it is. Yeah, I do. It's bad. It's bad. It's rotten. It's persecution. It's tribulation. And it come to steal the word of God from you. And God said, don't let him have it. Amen. It's up to you. 
I set before you life and death. Here's the kingdom way. Here's the other way. You're going to have to pick. No matter how hard it is, if you pick right, you'll get supernatural. If you don't, you get not so much. It's just the way, that, just the way it works. Every time. Not once in a while, but every time single time. You know how many times in the course of a week a Christian has to take the high road? Probably hourly or minutely. You know, and one thing about the 21st century, it's not boring. There's a lot of stuff flying at you all the time. We're up against some things that the early church wasn't up against. We've got some ammo in our belts the early church didn't have, too. They didn't have a written Bible. There's a a lot of things at our disposal they didn't have. And I'll tell you what, God really armed us in the last 10 years with with these, what do you call these things? Phones and iPads and devices, that's it. With all the devices, you have, you have what the London Library doesn't have inside a three by six inch piece of plastic. And as long as you don't forget to plug it in, you have instant recall of anything you ever knew, and you have recall of a whole bunch of stuff you never did know, you can ask Siri just about anything and it'll pop up answers. It's absolutely uh, miraculous what God has given man to come up with for such a time as this. And then, of course, the devil took it and filled it with filth and filled it with all kind of stuff that, that's not good. He's filled it with all kind of misinformation. He's filled, he's filled that up so when a Christian asks a question, it, every religious answer you can think of pops up to stop you from getting in the real thing. I have a, this for tonight. I just want to read it. I think it would be the easiest way to read it. Religion... Religion, uh, never chase religion. Remember I was talking about the man's desire to fill that hole. For 6,000 years, the human race has been trying to find that happiness they're chasing. And they've come up with one religion after another after another and people have copped out into these religions because they they understand enough to know there's got to be a higher power of some kind and uh, they've come up with a way to call on him that they've dreamed up in their head the the truth is what God said about that is there's only one way to God and it's a narrow way. It's not broad. There's not a whole lot of ways to God. That's the devil cooking up religious. Religion says that, but it's not true. Truth will make you free. Lies are from hell. The devil is the father of liars, and lies will kill you. He come but to kill, steal, and destroy, and a lie, I don't care how believable it seems to be in your head, if it's anti-Bible, it's a lie. And if if God said don't do it, it wasn't to keep you from having a good time. It was to keep you alive and keep you in that blessing so that all all this abundance that God put inside of you could manifest in the earth. And whenever we modify the Bible and what it means to fit our lifestyle that we think is so modern... Every time we do that, we forfeit. We come, off of every, we come off of what God said to do and go over here and do what he said not to do. Are you going to get a hundred-fold return out of that? 
No, you're not going to get 16, you're not going to get 30. What you're going to get is the persecution, tribulation come immediately, stole a word. You're getting nothing. Cares of this world is simply worry. And if you, if you cannot follow the Bible directions and keep worry out of your head, you're going to get beat and you're not going to get any return on that seed. The devil's going to take it away from you, and you'll be banging around in this world in the natural your whole life and never get anywhere because the seed never grows because it, you worry it away. I don't, a word on that. You can have faith in your heart with worry in your head. You're a spirit. What's going on in your head isn't a problem unless you, you say it. As a man thinketh, in his heart so is he. If you let it get abundant in there, it's going to come out on your mouth. And when it does, it takes what you say will wipe out which, the seed that's growing if it's counter Bible. And worry will do that. You get to worrying about, what am I going to wear? What am I going to eat? What am I going to do? Where am I going to pay? Where am I going to pay the bills? What happens if I lose my job? What's, how am I going to make this payment? And make that payment? And make that payment? I mean, the price is one up here, and the price is one up here, and I've got this. Ding, 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 ding. Well, that's all going on in your head. What are you going to say about that? My God supplies all my needs according to His riches and glory. If that's what comes off your tongue, then your spirit speaking, and the worry in your head isn't going to hurt anything. It's when you Say, out loud, I'm afraid. I hear Christians say it all the time. They're afraid of this, they're afraid of that, they're afraid of this. Usually afraid something's going to happen in the government or the world. And uh, the reason it is because they're feeding on fear constantly. From the fear mongers on the devices called news. It's not news so much as it's fear being pumped. And uh, if it gets in your heart abundant, it will get on your tongue. But if you get the opposite in your heart abundant, that'll get on your tongue. How do you get the opposite in your heart abundant? You take the treasure like you found it in a field. You take the word of God. The word of God's a treasure. God filled you up with a kingdom. The spirit of God's on the inside of you. Jesus is the word. When you put the word in the kingdom and you meditate it day and night like God said to do, that's, that sounds extreme to a lost man. It sounds extreme to a backsliding Christian. It sounds extreme to a Christian that's um, not kingdom-minded. But it doesn't sound extreme to somebody that can see through it. And anybody that's ever done that can watch things that you couldn't figure out and you couldn't seem to get done just start happening. Just start happening. I... Uh, I watched in my own lifetime with my horrible, horrible spending habits. I, I developed some, live, living the way I grew up, <clears throat> there wasn't anybody had less respect for money than I did, I don't think. I don't think I've ever met anybody that cared any less about it than I did. And uh, I, I thought I could make, didn't matter how much I spent, I could, uh, make it. There's always more money to be made. Of course, when you're young, you got plenty of ambition, and you can stay up and work. If you have to work all night, you work all night. If you have to work two nights, you work two nights, and uh, you just do what you have to do, and everything works out. But if you keep doing that like I did long enough, you'll dig yourself a big enough hole that even that won't get you out of it. And, uh, Sooner or later, you're going to find out, you know what? God's got a better way, and uh, he's got a whole different system. And, uh, when, and when I learned 
what God said about his system, and, and mainly because I had no, I had absolutely no other options. I had got myself in such a bad bind, it took, it, without a God miracle, ship was going down. <clears throat> and what I found out was, this word is so true, that when I, when I give up all the ideas I had and turn my back on it and went 100% for what God said to do and started doing what he said to do, he turned it around. I didn't. I was the same. I had the same stinking thinking while God fixed it that I had that got me into it. As a matter of fact, God got me out of I got myself back in. He got me out of I got myself back. There was a bit of a tussle there for a while before I finally figured out, you know, I should follow all the directions. Not just part of them some of the time. But what I did find out was tithing wasn't, get, wasn't put in the Bible to be done away with with grace. Tithing is blood covenant. What tithing does is it opens up a God avenue of blessing from th that kingdom into this place he's put us so where we're supplied through open windows of that heavenly system in this natural planet. And you can't get supplied through those windows if the windows aren't open. It won't work right. Given, it, given works when you give. Uh, it's God will give back to you. But tithing opens the window so there's a porthole to get it back and forth through. When in Malachi, when, it, when you read about tithing, it says there, that he had two things that he wanted to talk to him about. One was tithing and one was offerings. They're two separate things. And in our modern grace teaching, people have thrown that together. Teachers have done that, and they're, they're going to have to answer to God for it because they shouldn't be thrown together. They're not the same thing. Tithes are different than offerings. Alms are different than offerings and tithes. And they should be, it should be kept separate for people so that you can do, you have the opportunity to follow God. Not everybody will, but at least you should know about it. So if you ever get in a big enough bind, you know how to get out of it. And I'm telling you, I found out about tithing in 1979, and I haven't stopped since, and I won't. Amen. And, and the, what I found out was, I, I told Sherry, we're going to tithe. And she said, we can't. We don't have enough money. We'll, we don't have enough money to pay the bills now. I said, well, we won't, we're tithing. Anyway, and we never had another call from a bill collector. We just, when we made that decision and we started tithing, the phone was ringing off the hook, bill collectors. They just quit calling. God just took the pressure off. The, money, the problem wasn't fixed, <laughs> but the pressure come off immediately. And, and it, and, and things begin to happen fast. Within, uh, within uh, 12 months, I'd went from a high-paying salary to a business, and I was never on a salary again the rest, well, till I got in the ministry. And Mike Morrison Ministries, I'm paid by salary now. But, but between, between 1970 nine until now is never tied to the salary. It's because God's got a way of doing things that's, it, it's the same thing for everybody if they'll take him up on it, but it's unique and it's individual for every person that it bring, comes into it. His kingdom ways, I just looked at the clock. <laughs> His kingdom is not like the world at all. The world has, the devils, the God of this world cooked this mess up. And unfortunately, there's a religious system that is designed to mix it together.
mix the world's way together and the world's way, the God way and the world way together and work, to, work them. And they will work together, but you can't do it in your, you can't do it that way in your head. You've got to sell yourself out to the God way. And that's why the, the systems work together is because you're sold out to the right way. Does that make sense? Probably not, but I'm, I'm running out of time. I'm not done with this subject because I, I, I'm going to do, I'm going to stay here till I get a green light. Um, not necessarily on finances, but everything you need in this life. God's got a new way of providing it, a better way of providing it, and a way that you never are lacking. When you need it, he's given us promises and faith to put in the promises and instructions so that it will manifest right on time. Whatever we need, whenever we need. That's why we don't have to spend our time worrying about what if this happens and what if this happens and what if this happens. I don't care what happens. God's got, God's got it. And if it, if it takes a creative miracle for you to, to have victory when that happens, then a creative miracle is what he's going to do. He's already seen what's coming in your life. And he told you how to live through that in victory but you're going to have to sell out. Sell completely out to his way. Forsake the other and, and uh, put his way first. It's just, it, it's just as simple. Most Christ, Christian people lend mental assent to God's word and they really want to do it God's way. And then this comes up, and this comes up, and this comes up. This comes up in, in pretty quick. Uh, people that should be at this meeting aren't. And if they aren't five or six times in a row, they just aren't. What well, happens is Christian people slip back into that world system and they never do come, they never do get back. Once they slip out, they never do get back, usually. And uh, so hang on. Hang on, because storms, rugged storms come. But if you do this the way God said to do it and you stay sold out to the kingdom, uh, it really doesn't matter. The storm doesn't matter. God's got the answer no matter what it takes. He's got more than enough every single time. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for that um, provision, your supernatural glory. I thank you that you didn't fill us with an angel. You filled us with yourself. Your very presence resides in us and we and we can and we choose you thank you for showing us every choice every day thank you for cho showing us the highway Give, giving us a clear picture of what to pick for life which one's life and which one's death in every choice thank you lord in jesus name amen